Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How are you all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Algebra 1 and 2 class. Okay, today we're going to continue with, um, well, actually, we're going to introduce exponential functions. Exponential functions are really, really cool. It's powerful stuff. If you ever invest your money and you get compound interest, you're dealing with an exponential function. If you're a scientist and you find a fossil and you're trying to carbon date it, see how old it is, you're going to use exponential functions. If you're a scientist and you're dealing with radioactive materials and you work for a, a government agency that's trying to determine recycling rates and how pollution and what, what happens to our environment, you can find what's called the half-life of something. That, mean, that, that's, that describes how long it takes for half of the mass to decompose. So it's pretty crazy. Some things take millions of years for just half of it to decompose. So all of that are exponential examples. So I think exponentials are really, really useful and powerful, and they're actually pretty easy. Let's go ahead and investigate it. They break it down into little pieces. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you the whole shebang. And if it gets, if it's as complicated as I teach you, you're ready. If it's less complicated, you're ready. Okay, so this way you get both sides. The general form of an exponential function, guys, is y equals a b to the x power. Notice that the x in this case, it's always independent, but the x in this case is up here. It is an exponent. Not to be sarcastic, but that's why it's called exponential function because the x is the exponent. Just like a rational function, the x was in the denominator, right? Or a radical function, the x was in the radical. So whenever they name these functions, they're naming it based on what's happening to the x, the independent variable. So let's investigate this function, guys, the a. The a is the original or beginning or principal or initial amount. It's what you start with. And there's a lot of different words there because it could be, you know, the original size of this, whatever, uh, radioactive rock was, whatever, 25 grams, okay? Find how much it will weigh after three half-lives type of thing. It's the original, what you started with. I deposited $5,000 into an, a compound interest paying account that pays 4.2% interest. What I invested, that was my original amount, what I started with. The really important part, not that the original amount is not important, but what really manipulates things, what, what really changes things here, is the B. Okay? The B is the growth or decay. Very simple, though. If B is greater than 1, larger than 1, it's going to be a growth. Okay? And how do I find the growth? It's 1 plus R. Let me explain this. We're dealing with percents here. So 100% of a value equals 1, correct? Hence the 1. That's where the 1 comes from. And then the R will be another percentage. Let's say that they tell you that you're getting paid 10% on your, on your account. Well, it'd be 1, the 100% of your value, plus the 10%. So you're really getting paid 1.1. That's my growth factor. Okay? The R by itself is the growth um, rate. Okay? It's how much it went up or down. Does that make sense? Okay. So, how is it um, a decrease, a decay factor? If B is between 0 and 1, it's a fraction or it's a decimal, it's a, it's a decay factor, okay, decay. How do you get decay? Again, the 100% minus the R. So let's say you put your money into a stock, stock market and you lose 10% every year because it's doing bad. You just, you know, you, you got unlucky. Well, 1 minus that 10%, so it'd be 0.9 of the original amount. So that's less than 100, so you're losing. That is a decay factor, okay? So the actual answer, the actual B, is the decay or growth factor. The R by itself is either the rate of decay or r growth rate. 
That's either what you're adding to one when it's a growth rate, or it's what you're subtracting from one when it's a decay rate. Is that making sense so far? Okay, if you can see the two graphs that I have here, guys, I've got my exponential growth, and I put exponential decay just so you can see what it looks like. And I want you to notice some things about the exponential functions. Okay, it's going to get really, 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 really close to the x-axis, but it will never touch it. And I mean never. It will never cross it either. Okay? From left to right, from, from negative infinity to positive infinity, it's going to go really close to that x-axis, and then it's gently going to just go up. A decay is the opposite. Okay, growth is going up forever. Decay is losing, going down forever, except it will never cross the x-axis either. Okay, sir, go ahead. Okay, if it was a stock, you're right, stocks fluctuate. This, this would be the picture of a stock maybe performance in one week, for example. It was either a growth or a decay in that one week or in that one day even. Or, you know, some stock analysts, you know, they break it down by the hour. So you could have multiple different stocks and you could put them all together. Yes, sir. Yes. It will not touch the x-axis, either one of them, both in decay or growth, ever. It's never going to cross the x-axis. Yes, sir? Is the either rise or the decrease always constant? Like, it, it, does it go like this and then like that, or is it always a constant? No, there's a constant flow. It's a constant flow. It's decreasing little by little. At the same rate? Yes, of course, at the same rate, because at what rate is it going to be? At the rate of B. It's either growing or it's decaying. B is the rate at which it's growing or decaying. Great question. Is this making sense so far? Thank you, guys. Okay, so how do we graph this more? It's actually quite easy. Simply create a table of values using the domain negative 1, 0, and 1. Once complete, graph the ordered pairs and sketch the graph, remembering that the asymptote is the x-axis. Remember, we've already talked about asymptote. The asymptote is like a barrier. It's an invisible barrier. You cannot cross the x-axis. It's just a wall. You can't cross it. So you just make a simple table. Now, of course, I'm not unreasonable. You're going to see some crazy stuff with decimals and fractions in the, in the numerators and, and, and as exponents. I'm not unreasonable, guys. I know you're going to have to use a calculator. Don't, don't even sweat it. You're not cheating. Go for it. Do it. Use the calculator. Any engineer or, you know, mathematician or banker in real life, they're going to use a tool. They're going to use a computer or they're going to use a calculator. So I'm not too worried about that. What's really important is being able to set up the functions, being able to know what the procedures are. Because if I just give a calculator to someone who has never even seen an exponential, that doesn't help them, okay? So don't even think that, that you know, I'm being soft or weak with you guys. No, you're going to see it's crazy what I'm going to give you for homework tonight. Um, but you can use your calculator, okay? Now, for these, it's very simple. Negative 1, 0, and 1. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third, 3 to the 0 is 1, and 3 to the first is 3. So negative 1, 1 third... Let me erase this. So negative 1, 1 third, it's like there. Um, and then 0, 1. And then 1, 3. As long as you remember that it's an asymptote is there, so it just literally, that's it. That's your graph. It's going to just keep shooting forever and ever and ever. Mr. Moore, but I want to know the value after, you know, f when, when x is 10. Fine. You can plug in 10 here and go 3 to the 10th power, which I'm not going to do right now, but that's going to be astronomically, you know, way, way beyond up there, okay? But it, it, will, it will happen eventually. Sir? Yeah. 
What is the A here in this case? A 1. The B is a 3. So is this a growth or a decay? Very good. Because I added what to 1? I added 2, right? Because what's 1 plus 2? 3. If I ever want to find what I added, what my rate was, isn't this a growth? So didn't that come from 1 plus my rate equals 3? So divide it, uh, subtract 1. Wouldn't my R be 2? So wouldn't this really mean that it was an increase of 200% because 200% equals 2? That's why I told you this was a long lesson. There's a lot of connections that have to be made. Does this make sense so far? All right, let's see if I can squeeze anything else out here. Um, okay, I think I could do these real quick. Okay. My friends, determine if the given exponential function are growth or decay, then find both the growth or decay factors and the, the rate of growth or decay. Okay, so is this growth or decay? Decay. What's my growth factor? No, 0.85, right? What's my rate of decay? That's where you go 1. 1. Right, 1 minus R, right, equals 0.85, right? Right, guys? Right, because it's a decay, right? So if I subtract 1 to both sides, negative R equals negative 0.15. So my R, my decay rate, is 15%. Whatever happened here, it went down by 15%. Does that make sense? Yes, sir? If the only decay, if the, a, if the B is between 0 and 1. How about here? What is, it, what is this? Growth or decay? It's growth. Okay. My growth factor, my GF, is right there, 3.2. But what was my growth rate? What did I add to 1 to get to 3.2? Remember, you go 1 plus R equals 3.2. So my rate was 2.2. So that means that this was an increase of 220%. Is this making sense, my friends? 2.2. .2. Yes, sir, my brother. I didn't. I divided negative 1 to both sides. So R equals 0.15. Okay? Guys, please really focus on 11.1. We will finish this up on Monday. Thank you. I hope you learned a lot. And have a great day. Homework is not valid. All you got to do is study for 11.1, and, and uh, we'll continue 11.2 on Monday. Thank you.